Okay, in this problem, we're looking at a uniform circular motion system. It's a cat riding a merry-go-round. And we are given the velocity vector at a particular time, at two seconds after the clock has started. We're told that the velocity vector um, has magnitude 3 in the i-hat direction and 4 in the j-hat direction. Um, as we read on, we see that three seconds later, at t equals 5 seconds, the cat's velocity is now pointing negative 3 in the i-hat and negative 4 in the j-hat. Um, so notice the, you know, the, the similarity of those values. That's going to help us interpret the problem. As we read on, we see that uh, we're asked what is the magnitude of the cat's centripetal acceleration. For part, for part P, B, we're asked what is the magnitude of the cat's average acceleration during the time interval. And for part C, we're asked what is the magnitude and direction of the cat's acceleration vector at a particular time. T equals 3 seconds. There's missing information that was not transcribed correctly. For part A in particular, the radius of the merry-go-round is needed. So let's start with part A. So with part A, our key formula is that of the scalar value of the centripetal acceleration, the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration, also called the radial acceleration, which is v squared over r. Okay, so that's, that's just how we calculate centripetal acceleration. Okay, and we're given r, so r is 2.50 meters. So we need only find the magnitude of v. Well, v is the vector magnitude, okay? And the vector magnitude is found with the formula that is essentially the same as the Pythagorean theorem, which just takes the x component of velocity and squares it, and adds the y component of the velocity and puts them all si inside the square root to find the length of the hypotenuse, okay? And we will eventually actually need to think about the vector, so I might as well draw a picture of it now that we will later use. So this will be our velocity vector. All right, I'm going to try to draw this to scale. It will help make the problem seem appropriate. Okay, so let me just make this a little bit thicker. Okay, so we're looking at the two components of the velocity vector. All right, we'll have the vertical as well. So let's see. So it's, um, okay, well, it's taller in the... Um, the j hat. Okay, so let's redraw this. Okay, so let's just make it a little bit taller that way. There we go. This will be our velocity vector. There's our x component, and there's our y component. Okay, so this right here is the overall magnitude. Here is the x component as a vector, and there's a y component as a vector. Okay. All right, so let's go back to calculating that magnitude, which we can find. can be calculated like this, just by taking the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which, as you see on the calculator, gives us a value of 5 meters per second. Okay, well, now we have our magnitude, and we can go ahead and proceed to get our first uh, answer for part A. So the centripetal acceleration is just going to be 5 meters per second, quantity squared, divided by 2.5 meters, which is just going to give us 5 squared divided by 2.5, 10. 10 meters per second squared. All right, so there's our final answer for the magnitude and the value of centripetal acceleration. Okay, so you can see why we needed to know the radius of the merry-go-round. All right, so for part B, we're asked a different question because we're asked what is the magnitude of the cat's average acceleration. And certainly the average acceleration in uniform circular motion and the instantaneous and steady magnitude of the centripetal acceleration are not equal, okay? So let's state that, first of all. So for uniform circular motion, the average acceleration is not equal to the centripetal acceleration because the magnitude of centripetal acceleration is a constant. It's always equal to v squared over r. But the vector centripetal acceleration 
is not constant. Okay, It's constantly changing direction, which is actually something quite interesting about uniform circular motion, that although it's a type of motion where we get a what seems like a constant acceleration, similar to projectile motion, it is only constant in magnitude. This is actually a non-constant acceleration, which is an idea we will return to in later chapters. Okay. All right, so what does that mean? Well, that means is we have to actually just calculate the average acceleration, okay? So the average acceleration, okay, well, what is that? Well, that's just going to be, by definition, the delta of the velocity vectors divided by delta t, the difference in the velocity vectors divided by the difference in time, okay? So that's just going to be v2 minus v1 over delta t, okay? All right, so what does that look like? Well, for this problem, we can then just look at the vectors and do vector addition, okay? So we're actually going to just find find a new vector using basically tip-to-tail addition, but in, you know, in, in this form, okay? So I've written here what it looks like in i-hat and j-hat notation. And we have, of course, the difference in time being three seconds. So five minus two, three seconds. Okay. So then when we express that as a vector, well, we'd have three minus negative three. So we'll have six on the i hat. And then we're going to have positive eight for the value attached to the j hat. Okay. So then this whole thing is then going to be divided by three seconds. Okay. So in decimal form, this just looks like 2 i hat plus 2.67 uh, j hat. Okay, so that's our acceleration vector. It's pointing kind of straight up. So let's, and now, okay, we really want to start thinking about the picture here, and this is going to be um, crucial for the next, next part of the problem. So let me draw a circle and show the velocity vectors. So here I've drawn the circle and I placed the velocity vector um, that we had up here. So basically this 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 velocity vector, and I resized it to the circle and placed it bit where that velocity was approximately tangent to the line of the circle. So I kind of knew where in space that that velocity occurred uh, because it has to be tangent to the curve. And since it's pointing since v1 is pointing up and to the right we know that it has to be down in, well, the third quadrant, right? It has to, you know, be down because otherwise it wouldn't point that way. And then V2, obviously, since it's opposite in I and J, it's, it's well, importantly, it's 180 degrees later. Okay, so we know, we know that, right? So we know that if we just think about the degree difference between these two points, that, they, that we have 180 degrees because, because just, we just tacked on a negative to the I hat and the J hat, and that's the same as reflecting 180 degrees. Okay. So let's think about that then. So that means that our acceleration vector, our average acceleration vector, is pointing with with magnitude that's you know basically at almost at 45 degrees, right? So it's pointing up and to the right, right? So we got positive or you know positive two and positive 2.67. So we have to draw that and and show that that's actually you know representing our our average acceleration, okay? Which we know is you know the, a, the sum of all these different centripetal accelerations okay so what is it what would our average acceleration vector look like okay so let's draw it well as writing the acceleration vector I, s I caught a um, a mistake that's that's making the value not make any sense because up here I wrote v2 minus v1, but then in the actual quantities, I wrote v1 minus v2. So let's go ahead and correct that and show how that changes the signs on the acceleration vector. So we see when I correct for the vectors here, with v2 being negative 3, negative 4, that we actually get negative 6, negative 8 on our equation here, and what that we have to divide by the difference in time, the elapsed time of 3 seconds, which gives us our actual acceleration vector as negative 2 i hat negative 2.67 j hat. And this makes sense because what should be happening is we should have a bunch of, um, of acceleration vectors. And I'll just kind of sort of show what I mean by that. You can just imagine, you know, this could be the centripetal acceleration at point 0.1. 
So that would be A1. And then later on, we could have one here. And then they're always pointing towards the center. So as this cat goes merrily around the edge, the, 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 the acceleration vectors always point towards the center. And since we cover a total of 180 degrees, as I said before, right? So we're going all the way from here to here of the 180, that we're looking at, well, some cancellation. Because what's going to happen is the components of the acceleration vector that are along this line are all going to cancel. So then there basically there's going to be no acceleration vector pointing you know, down and to, um, or down and to the, um, the right or up and to the left. OK? Um, OK, so what does that mean? Well, that means that we should expect the only part of the acceleration vector that survives is going to be pointing in the negative direction, right? Because we still have a bunch of components that point down, and those aren't completely canceling, right? They're actually going to be adding up. So that's why when we actually go ahead and calculate that average acceleration vector, and we think about the way it points, OK, so here we have it, our average acceleration vector, OK? Like so, with the bar for average and then the vector. Well, OK, so what does it look like? Well, it's going to be down and to the left. Okay? And that makes perfect sense because that's that's the part of the or the component that didn't cancel it as during that 180 degrees, during that symmetry. And we can really put it anywhere. You know, I can just kind of think of the average acceleration vector as maybe leaving the origin like so. All right? Cuz remember vectors are never defined by the location in space, but instead entirely by their um, their direction and magnitude. Okay? All right, so that's that's definitely helpful, um, you know, for kind of thinking about why the answer makes sense for part B. So now we want to move on to the last part, to part C, where we're actually going to have to think more carefully about that picture that we drew to wrap up and interpret part B. Okay, so for part C, we're asked for the magnitude and direction of the cat's acceleration vector at a particular time. Well, we know the magnitude. We know the magnitude is going to be 10 meters per second squared. Okay, so that's you know, that's that's definitely um, clean clear because it never changes. That's the thing about uniform circular motion. That's it. That is the uniform part. Oh, and by the way, I should add my units here to um, the acceleration vector I solved for. But getting back to part C, we know the magnitude, but we we don't know the direction at that particular instant in time. So we have to leverage the fact that we know it's going to have to point to the center, and then think about how many degrees have been covered in that amount of time. Okay. So, well, we start, um, you know, at 2 seconds, and we get to 5 seconds, and that's 180 degrees, okay? So we know that 180 degrees is rotated in, um, and that's in 3 seconds, okay? So part C asks for the location at 3 seconds, which is 1 second after um, location 1. Okay, so that's going to be one third of 180 is the degrees that have, have been covered in that first second. So at t equals three seconds, 180 divided by three, which is going to be equal to 60 degrees, is covered. Okay. So what does that look like? Okay, well, we have to think about 60 degrees here. So we'll draw a line that goes through the center as best we can. And remember that that's our, our 180 degrees. So if we want to cover 60 degrees, it's going to look something like this. Okay, so maybe, you know, we'll have it going here, right? Maybe maybe that's approximately 60 degrees. But what we need to do is we need to find out what's, what's the initial angle, right? We need to find the angle of vector... Um, vector 1, you know, the velocity vector, relative to the, um, you know, the x-axis, really. So to do that, we're going to think about some information from the picture of the velocity vector as a right triangle, okay? So let's do that. So we know that tangent of theta, well, what theta am I talking about, okay? This theta, I'm going to call this value here theta. Right, same theta here. So tangent of theta is going to be Vy over Vx, which is 4 over 3. 
So that gives us that theta is going to be tangent inverse of 4 over 3. Okay, so let's go to our calculator and do tangent inverse. Okay, uh, 4 divided by 3. All right. Make sure we're in the right mode. All right, we are in radian mode. So I want the answer in degrees, the easier interpretation. Okay, so then let's go back to home. Okay, so let's get that value, 53 degrees. Okay, so we have that tangent of four over three is 53 degrees. All right, and we'll do three sig figs, so 53.1 degrees. Okay, so then we can think about the angle with the x-axis um, by remembering that this line here has to be at a at 100 or at 90 degrees, has to be perpendicular to the velocity vector, okay? So zoom in a bit so we can kind of think about the geometry. So clean this up. Okay, so we have a right triangle here, which I'll show, or rather a right angle right there. And so then we can think about, okay, well then how, you know, how many degrees, you know, what, what must this, what must be the, um, the angle here, this one, with the x-axis, okay, which we'll call phi. Because if we can think about that angle, then we can think about how much the, the, what, the 60 degrees that was added, how that will then affect the, the final angle of the radius to that that point basically you know because if we think of the particle and we know that it moves 60 degrees well is 60 degrees going to get us up here and then we can find that angle and once we have that angle we know the, the the direction that the acceleration vector points okay so let's work on this part okay so I've just cleaned up the figure here to clearly show the angle phi okay and how it relates to the angle theta that we solved for using the components of the velocity vector. Okay, well, we see that phi is equal to, okay, write this a little bit differently, okay, so that phi is equal to 90 degrees minus theta, okay, which is, which is just going to give us 90 minus our 53.13 and so on, which gives us a value of 36.9 degrees. Okay, so we have 36.9 degrees. Okay, and that's that's both this angle here, this angle here, and this one. Okay, so that that tells us that if we're going to cover 60 degrees, all right. So we'll draw another line. So this will be our dotted line. Now I'll make it a little less steep, so it looks less like 90. All right, so let's move our axis label over here, and we're going to have it. Okay, so if we know that this angle right here is 60 degrees because that's how much the particle moves the cat <laughs> the cat particle from point one at two seconds to this other point at three seconds okay so then we know that this is angle that's left over above the x-axis which is going to help us define the direction of the acceleration vector that's the key because we need to know the the location so we can define the correct components of that 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 vector okay so then this, this angle right here, which we're going to call beta, well, beta is just going to be 60 minus phi, okay? So let's do that over here. So then beta is just going to be 60 degrees minus phi, which is 60 minus the angle that we had from before. All right, so 23.1 degrees. Okay, so now we can actually define our acceleration vector because we know it points towards the center. Okay, so let's get that. All right, so here, here it is. Make it a little bit more visible. Okay, so there it is. There is our acceleration vector. And this one specifically is the centripetal acceleration. It's just the centripetal acceleration at that instant in time, at three seconds. Because remember, the centripetal acceleration is constantly pointing different directions, even though its magnitude doesn't change. Okay, 
So then we just have to then think about the two components so we can draw a right triangle in here. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that. And some thin using the same purple for the acceleration. So these are our two components of the acceleration. Okay, so that's going to be A, C, um, Y, and this one here is A, C, X. Okay, so those two components of the acceleration. Okay, well, now we're, we're in good shape because we can actually then think about um, how, how those angles are defined. Well, since this is beta right here, that's beta, so then we know that we could draw beta inside of the right triangle of the acceleration vector because its components, of course, parallel to the axes. So we go back to here. This angle right here is our trusty beta. Okay? Beta. That's beta again. Okay? So now let's write out the final answer for the acceleration, the centripetal acceleration at t equals 3 seconds. Okay? Well, it's going to be 10, because that's just the magnitude, okay, times, uh, okay, so the first one's going to be the, um, the i hat, so that's going to be cosine of 23.1 degrees, and that's in the i hat direction, okay, and it's going to be, and that's negative, by the way, they're both going to be negative, because the acceleration vector obviously points down and to the left, so negative there, and then for j hat, we're going to have negative 10 sine of 23.1 degrees j hat, okay? And again, if you just that's just sine for the for the vertical because of Sokotoa, right? Here this is this is opposite over adjacent, right? For sine, whereas for cosine it's sorry, opposite over hypotenuse, but for cosine it's adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay? So we might as well finally write a numerical value for that to wrap this up. So let me just condense that so we can fit our last line in. Okay. Okay. So I've go I've gone ahead and calculated the values, and we've got uh, if you look at the calculator for the i hat for the x component, we have negative nine um, point uh, two zero negative nine point two zero i hat. Okay, that's the magnitude. And then much smaller in the j hat direction, we have negative uh, 3.93. So 3.93 j hats. Our final answer. Notice we didn't round that I carried over the exact uh, values. So we didn't have any rounding errors. Okay, so we can look at that. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, because the the acceleration vector at that point, you know, at at t equals three seconds. Right. So at t equals three seconds, right here. Right. Of course, this was two seconds down here that it's pointing, you know, not exactly parallel to the negative axis, x-axis, but it has a you know, smaller vertical component. Okay, so what's gone on here, right? So well, a lot of things were highlighted in this problem as a whole. Obviously, um, you know, there was a lot, a lot of different steps, and the, the focus um, changed, um, as well as the each subsequent part got a, a slightly harder. But I want to uh, call attention to just using the formula for centripetal acceleration, obviously remembering that. Uh, remembering that um, you don't need to know anything about the direction, just the magnitude of V. Um, the, I remember a key um, conceptual idea that average acceleration and centripetal acceleration are not equal to each other for uniform circular motion. And just, um, just, just practice with vectors, thinking about them, making uh, angle, ang angle calculations uh, with geometric ideas, like we here where we had the 90 degrees minus theta in order to find phi and then to actually carry that forward to find beta. So the geometry as well as just the, you know, the Sokotoa and just working with Trig and making that spatial reasoning that's crucial for getting an answer like the actual direction of the acceleration vector at that moment in time, um, which didn't require any fancy calculus, but just thinking about it spatially. Okay, thank you.